25 years ago, I was in detox for my crack addiction and alcoholism. I was also in legal trouble. Early on, I wasn't sure I was gonna make it. At some point, I saw clearly that my addiction had destroyed my life as I had known it. With nothing more to lose, I decided I would do my best to stay clean. I started with one day. You too can start with a day, then a week, a month, a year. I've been clean now for 25 years. This is my silver anniversary. I'm not bragging, just sharing. It's been a long, long road. And the hills were so high. And the nights cold. Till I finally realized it's not just for me, it's for my friends and my family that I'm still, still clean. I am the granddaughter of Thomas Henderson. I'm here to celebrate my grandfather's 25th year anniversary of staying clean and sober. Ladies and gentlemen, your friend and my grandfather, Thomas Henderson. Oh. <laughs> well, hello everybody. My name is Thomas Henderson. I'm an alcoholic. It's been an interesting ride for these 25 years. 9,125 days since I've had a drink or a drug in my body. Tonight here in Austin with my family and friends, I get to talk about this again. I'm not about the problem. Everybody knows I drank too much and too often. Did cocaine, went to jail. Screwed up my career in the National Football League. Problems. And so tonight we're talking about alcoholism, drug addiction, and recovery. So 25 years, I've been able to really, just really live a great life and have great friends. I met Thomas in, in 1975 when he was a part of what they consider today the best draft that the Dallas Cowboys uh, ever held, yes, uh, the Dirty Dozen. Yes, sir. And it didn't take long to get to know one of the Dirty Dozen, Thomas <laughs> Henderson. I played 15 years uh, for Dallas and saw a lot of players come and go and I can honestly say that Thomas is the most gifted, talented athlete I've ever had the experience of playing with. And I played with a lot of great players. At 10 years clean, I had already done a lot of work on my life. One of the things I did was make amends to my boss, Coach Tom Landry. Here is what he said at my 10-year anniversary. You know, the first time that I heard about Thomas was when we, had, we sent one of our best uh, scouts up to see him. Uh, Griff went up to see him one time. He was supposed to be scrimmaging that day. And so Griff went up to Langston and got on the, walked down the sideline, and the, the, the scrimmage was going on, and he was looking all over the place for Thomas. Couldn't find Thomas any place. And finally, he, he was standing there looking for him, and, and here comes Thomas. He walks up with his clothes on, not his, his uniform. He walks up and, and, and says to Griff, he says, uh, would you like to see me scrimmage? <laughs> and... Uh, and of course, Griff. Of course, Griff. You know, Griff was scared because he didn't want the coach to be, you know, upset the coach. And he said, and Thomas said, "Wait a minute." So he runs over, goes in the dressing room, puts on his uniform, comes out, puts himself into the scrimmage. You know, makes three or four or five good plays. Comes back to Griff and says, "Have you seen enough?" <laughs> Boy, right there, I should have not drafted him. <laughs> I tell you. It would, it would have saved me a lot of problems, boy, <laughs> through the years. 
I remember when uh, Thomas was in prison out in uh, California, and we were then having drug seminars with the coaches. And uh, hit one statement he made, what I thought was devastating, and I was really concerned about it, was he said that about 98 percent, you know, of the people in here on drugs, you know, will be back on by the time a year has passed. So you can say that Thomas has made a tremendous turnaround, you know, in his life. And it's, it's worthwhile. And this is a thing that, that excites me uh, when I see what Thomas has done. Uh, we can say he's Hollywood and we can say he talks a lot and anything, but when a guy does what he does, he has a great heart. And that's awful important in life. He cares about people. And Thomas, I just hope you continue the great work that you do. And boy, I tell you, I wish I'd have had you all through your career. We'd have, we may have had seven or eight Super Bowls before it was over with. But thank you a lot for inviting me and be a part of tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>